Hi there, and welcome to the second instalment of Booster Books on the Future and Social Change. These are the books that are in my library and which I recommend as I move around the world speaking to leaders and others through media and events. These are the books that I think will help you as we seek to negotiate social change. One of my favourite British journalists is a man called Brian Appleyard. Some years ago he wrote this book called Understanding the Present. And even though the title suggests it's a book about now, it's actually a book about negotiating the future well. Though he's not a scientist, Appleyard very successfully uh, puts together an argument about the importance of science and technology in our world today, but he also challenges the pure rationalism and ultra-pragmatism that often underpin technological development. The attitude that if a thing can be done, it should be done, is something that Appleyard is really out to bring down. This book is part history, part philosophy, and part just common sense. It will really challenge your worldview. And as you can see from all the bookmarks in the top there, I've used this book many times over in my commentary in media. Here's another book by Brian Appleyard. It's called Brave New Worlds. It's all about the science of genetics and what it means potentially to the future of human society and the human individual. It talks about eugenics, it talks about cloning. It's not an alarmist or conspiracy theorist book. It's very well researched, but it does call for a bit of a pause to think on where these technologies may be taking us in terms of the human condition and human civilization. I recommend it highly. It's not a comfortable read. It will challenge you, but I think in that respect alone, it's worth the investment. The Meaning of the 21st Century by British futurist James Martin is a well-researched, wide-ranging look at some of the major changes coming down the pike at us over the next 10 years or so. And unlike some other books on the future, it's very optimistic. The author is, by training, a problem solver. And he brings the skills of a problem solver to some of the big challenges we will face in, in ecology, in privacy, in uh, genetic engineering, and much more. It's a thick book. It's not light bedtime reading, but I think you'll find it very, very valuable. A Brief History of the Future is written by one of Europe's leading thinkers, Jacques Attali. Again, it's not light bedtime reading, but really it's worth the investment of your energy. In the book, Attali takes a look at where we might be going in the future by tracking where we've been in the past. He does a bit of a history lesson by giving us a look at how technological change in each of the epochs in history has led to shifts in power centres, geographical and economic. In so doing, he throws an interesting light on where we might be headed over the next 10 or 15 years, especially as American and Western power is diminished to some degree by the rise of economic giants like China and India. I think you'll find this book really rewarding and I highly recommend it. The Geopolitics of Emotion is written by Dominique Moisey. I'm not sure that I'm saying the surname correctly, but this really is a book you should grab. It's quite unusual. It looks at how collective emotions, cultural emotions, such as fear, anger, humiliation, are not only shaping communities and cities, but are shaping nations and the way nations relate to one another. It's uh, not a book so much about the clash of civilizations as it is about how we might overcome some of the fear that exists between cultures and reach agreement and reconciliation. This is a great book for anybody in civic leadership. It's also a must for any student of the political sciences. The Future Files by Richard Watson takes a look at the five trends that will shape the next 50 years. Watson's giving us an intriguing look here at the power of things like celebrity within media, of personality politics within government, and of digital technology within money and financial services. And most importantly, he's giving us some idea of the implications of each of these in the area of business. I highly recommend Watson's Future Files. In the first instalment of these booster books on the future and social change, I mentioned a book called Affluenza by Oliver James. This is the follow-up to that book. It's simply called The Selfish Capitalist, and it looks in more detail at the background behind the points that he made in that earlier book. Now, even if you haven't read Affluenza, this book is a must-read, I think, for business leaders, for community leaders, and certainly for church leaders. It's all about how the influence of materialism and capitalism 
has in some ways robbed people in the Western world of meaning, of joy, of contentment, and the ramifications to the future in all of that. So check this book out, grab it if you can, it's worth the money. Well, this next book is from a very good friend of mine by the name of Dr. Patrick Dixon. Many, myself included, would consider Patrick to be probably Europe's leading futurist today. The book is simply called Future Wise, The Six Phases of Global Change. It looks at the fact that over the next 10 or 20 years, the pace of change will bring about new approaches to urbanization, of course, new technologies, um, new understandings of what it means to be a global citizen, and so much more. The book really is written in depth, and one of my favorite statements that Patrick makes is very simple but quite insightful. He says that if we don't shape the future, the future will shape us. He also says that we are all, in one way or another, futurists. That is to say, we are somehow genetically wired to be thinking about our future, to be thinking about where we'll take our next holiday, where we'll be educated, where we'll buy a new home, and so on. So whilst this book is probably most read by business, corporate, and commercial leaders, I think it is a benefit to anybody who wants to engage their future now. Well, that's it for the second instalment of Booster Books on the Future and Social Change. I hope there's something there that will help you lift your approach to life and leadership to another level. I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Bye for now.